In this video we're going to cover microbiological testing for swimming pools. It's a requirement that commercial swimming pools have a sample of water taken from the pool and analysed at a UCAS accredited laboratory on a frequency of once a month for typical swimming pools. Hydrotherapy pools need to do it a little bit more frequently. They need to do it every week. This is usually something that uh, a pool operator will contract out to a, a third party who will be responsible for um, collecting the samples from your pool and transporting them to a UCAS accredited laboratory where they'll analyse them and produce a report that goes back to that third party and the third party analyzes that report, scrutinizes it and feeds back the information to the pool operator. The sampling needs to be done in the correct way, hence usually it's, it's, it's more convenient in a lot of cases to get uh, the third party involved rather than staff from the facility taking samples and transporting it because there is a certain correct way of taking the sample in the first place and it also needs to be transported to the laboratory under temperature controlled conditions somewhere between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius and ideally it needs to be from the pool to the laboratory within a, a four hour time frame. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you have got a third party contractor involved in, in taking the water sample for you and transporting it to the laboratory. What I want to focus on in this video is looking at the report that you get back from the lab and being able to interpret it properly and, and make your own decision, a site-based decision about how to deal with any problems that the report throws up because you, you can't really rely on the either the laboratory or the third party contractor to make these kinds of decisions for you as a pool operator at the end of the day, the buck does stop with with you to make the right decisions in terms of do you keep the pool open um, if you get unsatisfactory results and, and how do you make that decision and what to do about it if you don't get um, satisfactory results but they're not highly elevated levels of bacteria, there are just sort of uh, moderate levels of bacteria it can be it can be a confusing area so I want to try and um, help you out with that side of things really so let, let's look at the the types of tests that they do um, they basically take a sample of your of your water and they mix it with their agar which is the culture medium and they and they put it into a an incubator and they'll incubate it for 37 degrees C for 24 hours and they'll take it out after that period of time and they will look at the number of visible colonies of bacteria there are now showing on the on the culture medium hopefully the best result obviously is that there isn't that there's no visible colony uh, colonies of bacteria that's that's got to be what you always Need, need to aim for um, but what they'll do is they'll there's four uh, tests there's four indicators um, of bacteriological um, contamination the first one is called the colony count uh, sometimes it's referred to as the aerobic colony count sometimes it's referred to as the total plate count and other times it's referred to as the total viable count. So depending on what laboratory um, is carrying out the test, they could be using 
either one of those three terms and they'll uh, oftentimes abbreviate it as well so if you see an abbreviation of TVC on your test reports um, you need to know that that stands for total viable count what this is is it's a count up of all of the um, bacteria that was capable of forming a colon colony under those conditions so 37 at 37 degrees C at uh, for 24 hours it's not really looking at uh, different types of bacteria or differentiating in any way between types of bacteria it's just a count up of of all the bacteria that was capable of forming colonies in, the, in, in those conditions so that's the first indicator and what you're aiming for here and I think I'll just put this in as a caveat you're aiming for zero across the board um, always have that as your goal um, because of these four things of these four indicators there are tolerances but I don't advise um, having any anything other than perfect conditions in terms of bacteriological contamination as your as your goal so always aim for zero because that's definitely very very doable if you are doing everything correctly in terms of your uh, management of your pool so you're aiming for zero but if you look on your test report and you've got anywhere between um, zero and ten um, below 10 is, is is considered acceptable as long as it's not present in you know repeated samples so less than 10 colony forming units per milliliter is the um, acceptable standard on the total viable count um, and that that mode of expression colony forming units that often gets re, um, shortened down to CFUs then they tend to abbreviate it so where you see CFUs on your bacteriological test reports um, just realize that that stands for colony forming units so with TVCs it's um, an acceptable result is less than 10 colony forming units per milliliter what they'll also do is they'll test for something called coliform bacteria and E. coli E. coli is a type of coliform bacteria coliform bacteria are pathogenic in that they can be harmful to humans they can cause infections so um, what you're looking on coliform what you're looking for on coliform bacteria is to not have any um, in a hundred, with with coliform bacteria with well actually with all the rest of them that the, the, they're looking for um, zero per hundred mil of swimming pool water so coliforms you're looking for zero uh, and again it, it might up to 10 colony forming units per milli, uh, per 100 milliliters may be acceptable as long as it's not repeated um, on subsequent tests and as long as you haven't got any E. coli and as long as your total viable count is fine um, anywhere between zero and ten colony forming uh, units on just one test uh, one test result coming back um, is regarded as being acceptable but like I say you don't want to have these levels in repeated samples so it may indicate a problem if you if you're finding that you're getting slight elevated levels on repeated tests the next one is to test for E. coli which as I say is a is a type of coliform bacteria but unlike other types of coliform bacteria the only place that E. coli can um, multiply is in the intestines so the presence of it in your swimming pool water is an indication that there has been some form of fecal contamination and even more worryingly that contamination the, the bacteria in that contamination has not been neutralized by your disinfection system so we're really looking for zero colony forming units per 100 mil when it comes to E. coli and the fourth and final test that they carry out is on a bacteria called Pseudomonas aeruginosa which is a type of bacteria that tends to infect the skin and possibly the ears and 
the what you're looking for here to remain within acceptable limits is um, less than 10 colony forming units per 100 milliliters. So on most of them except E. coli the target is less than well the target is zero but acceptable may be regarded as less than 10 colony forming units uh, per mil if it's total viable count or per 100 mil for any of the others but with E. coli there's not really much tolerance there's far less tolerance with E. coli than there is with the with the others. So if you're getting your test reports back from the lab every month and they all show consistently that you've got zero colony forming units on all these tests right across the board, it becomes a very uh, stress-free type of task to analyze those and scrutinize those on a monthly basis. You simply look at them, recognize the fact that they're all zero and uh, file them away. Um, but what if the you, you're getting these results that are coming back that are slightly elevated, that aren't within tolerance, or that you're getting sort of low numbers but on repeated months. Well, something's not right there and you need to investigate the problem. If you're getting results that are outside of these tolerances that I've mentioned, then you need to organise a resample. So if you if you get your sample back and you and you discover, for example, that your total viable count number is above 10 colony forming units per mil, or or your um, coliform is your coliform count is above 10 colony forming units per 100 mil, or if your Pseudomonas aeruginosa is above 10 um, colony forming units per 100 mil, or if you've got any E. coli, even if that's less than 10 colony forming units per 100 mil, if you've got any E. coli, with that sort of result coming back, you need to get a retest done. So you don't necessarily need to close the pool. I'm not saying that, but you do need to get a retest done. Um, and if you get unsatisfactory results coming back from the retest, then you really do need to start looking at the arrangements that you've got in place. Something's obviously not working because the system should be able to cope with the bacteria that's being introduced on a day-to-day -day basis and it's clear and it's clearly not so there's an issue there somewhere um, and we'll cover what to do about um, unsatisfactory microbiolo biological test results in an, in another video but what you need to do is 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 find the uh, factor or factors that are contributing to this problem and rectify and get a third test done and if you're still not getting good results back from the lab by the time you've done three set tests bearing in mind that there's going to be at least uh, a couple of days between these tests because it takes 24 hours just for the incubation time let alone uh, collecting the sample and transporting it to the lab so if you're if you're still if you're still not back to um, uh, good results after three tests then that that's the point where you really need to consider closing the pool because something's something's obviously um, seriously wrong with the system at that point and it's putting people at risk